Hi, welcome to Funnit for Videos. This is DC here. This is a new video series on Mifay application directory. It's also called as MAD or MAD. Now, this video series will be more on the technical side where we'll be working with the bits and bytes. This video series will benefit software developers, students of technology, and system integrators. Now, throughout the video series, we'll be learning the following things. So we're going to discuss what is uh, MAD, different types of MAD, the various data structures, the meaning of a tag length value or TLV structure, and the formatting and preparing a tag for MAD, and storing end of messages. The end of message itself is a it's a, a different uh, domain which is uh, uh, you know which which you have to you have to read a lot about end of messages. So I will not be covering end of messages in detail in this video series so i'll be focusing more on the mad we're going to see what are the applications of mad and everything you know i'm going to cover in detail every aspect of mad i'll be covering in detail here so i'll be using acr 122u reader writer or a pn532 or reader writer board and i'll be using the mefair classic 1k 4k and the mefair plus tax So I would expect you to know uh, some of these things. So since I'll be using MiFi Classic 1K or 4K memory structure, so I would advise you to um, know this. If you don't, if you're not aware of uh, MiFi Classic 1K memory structures, I would advise you to see my my videos on MiFi Classic 1K. You should know what is key A, what is key B, and access rights. Again. If you if you don't understand these concepts, you go back to my videos and you will get to know uh, the meaning of all these things. The sectors and blocks. You should know what's a data block or a sector trailer block. And as I mentioned before, I've got a video series uh, that explains all the above points. So three documents I have found that will be useful to you. And the very first document, read and next pay document you know it's called an1087 mefa application directory this is uh, very much required to understand the mat structure the other two documents are are mainly for storing indef messages in the mat formatted tag so you can download all these three documents from internet i have a copy here already So this is the document you have to get from internet. This is called Mayfair Application Directory called MAD. And this looks, uh, it's a fairly new document. It's a, it's a 2018 version. And also the other two documents are, uh, these are pretty old, but uh, you have to read this thing. There's some interesting concept here as well. Plus the last document is called Mayfair Classic and uh, now whatever is mentioned here. So this is also worth reading. So you might end up reading these documents uh, like a couple of times until you get hang of this uh, concept and keep the documents as a, a reference manual. So what is MAD and is this required? So I have done, uh, I have designed many projects that uses me for a classic tags, but so far I have never used the MAD structure at all. So, so that shows uh, match structure is not a required thing, you know, it, it all depends on the application. So to put in simple words, MAD is a, a kind of a standard or recommendation. So the standard says how to format the memory. It says, you know, what should be the default keys and you have to store certain data like this. So all these, you know, types of rules are part of the MAD specification or the MAD standard. So most of the time, you know, all these uh, details are related to the, the data structuring. Again, it's also a conformance to standard. 
and makes any product work with different vendors and softwares. So if you use MAD structure, so that means your tag conforms to a standard and these uh, MAD formatted tags can work with with products you know, from different vendors. So that's, that's what uh, I'm, I mean to say here. It also, the, the MAT structure is meant to support multiple application in a single tag. So, and also the multiple vendors. So this is something like, you know, using the a same card in different countries. So if, um, if, the, if all these uh, products in different countries, if they all use the mat structure then your tag will become more portable now as i mentioned before this is not a mandatory to have mat so if you are creating a software project which is used within the organization or for your proprietary application you can still do a, a pro or you can still use your tag without having a, a mat structure but my advice is you know, it's good to know about MAD, like you know, you, you go out with uh, some knowledge about the standard. So this MAD, most often it's used to store the end of data in the MIFI classic tag. Now if you have already know something about the MIF, uh, end, end of uh, messages, so most end of messages or end of data are stored using tags like uh, end tag, Intact 213 or uh, Mifer Ultralight C or uh, Desfire. So, so it is not common to see the end of messages stored in the Mifer Classic Tags. However, using the, the MAD format, you can store end of messages and make this uh, data interoperable. So that was a brief introduction to uh, MAT structure and in my later videos I'm going to cover every aspect you know the technical side of MAT in detail. Now now I'm going to show how to create or how to format a, a new MIFI classic tag using a MAT and how to store an INDEF. So I'll be using a software called uh, GoToTags that's one of the very popular software uh, you know you can you can use that software in your design process or to format it so let's see now how you can do that I'm going to say I'm going to show you what exactly has happened uh, to the tag after the mat format you can see here I've connected my AC run to to reader writer and I'm going to place a brand new uh, Mifair classic tag and then we're going to see what is inside this tag Now, because this is a brand new tag, the default factory keys are all FFF. So you just have to make a uh, make a note of this uh, the access rights bit. For a, a brand new tag, the access rights of the data blocks are zeros, but the access rights of the the sector trailer is set to one. Now I'm going to format this tag, and I'm going to say the difference. Uh, when it's uh, mat formatted now this is a software called uh, go to tax windows app and it's already recognized my my a 22 u reader writer in order to format you choose this icon end format and ask me to place the tag now it says it's formatting so when the formatting is done you get this message done and we are going to see what has happened in this tag. So back into my program, I'm going to reactivate. Now if you try to read, say read entire tag, now nothing has been read and all the read operations um, were unsuccessful. Now the first thing you know what we can make out from, from this uh, formatting is the keys are no more the default factory keys. Now keep in mind we just formatted this this tag and we are going to see what has happened when you format it. 
So, if you read this uh, documentation, it's all mentioned here. Now, we are going to discuss that in detail in a step by step in my later part of the videos or in the, in the future videos. Now, I know that the keys, the default keys are no more factor setting. So, I'm going to use, so these are the, the known keys. The first entry is the, the default factor keys. The second key value is called A0, A1, A2, A3, A4, A5. This is called as a mat sector keys. And the next one is NFC sector keys called the value is D3, F7, D3. These values, you know, it's all mentioned in the documentation. Now, I'm going to set this value of key A to um, the key D3, F7, so on. And this time I'm going to hit read the entire tag. Now, you can see that, so some data has been read. And if you look at the the amount of data is read, so everything from sector 1 to sector 15 is read using the the key A, the value that's mentioned here. Now, this key is called NFC sector keys, and this is a, a public key. Everybody knows this key. So, if you look at this uh, structure here, now... If the key value, all these sectors, what you see here, sector 1, sector 2, sector 3, they are called as NFC sector keys. That's exactly what the, the formatting has done. Now, we don't have the, the sector 0 here. In order to do that, I'm going to read it separately because the software present, in a, if you hit this uh, entire tag, it, it again starts from 0. So, I'm going to choose the match sector key and authenticate the sector zero and say read sector. So this time we have read the sector zero. Now the sector zero has got a, a known key, which is A0, A1 up to A5. Now you're, you're slowly getting into the mat structure now. So in the mat structure, the first sector is called as the mat sector. This is where the the application that see the the content of this um, sector is like a uh, it's like a pointer to the various application which I, I'm going to speak in my in my next video but in this video we're just going to say that the sector 0 is a mat sector and everything from sector 1 up to sector 15 is called the NFC sector now the mat sector has got information about the directory entries whereas the NFC sector has got information about your the end end of messages so if you look at this um, the access rights there's something you know you have to understand here now the access rights of sector trial are all set to three if you look at this software and look at the entry correspond to three it says Using 3, you need to use a key B to write. You can read the entire sector using either key or key B. And you can change the value of uh, key A and key B using, using key B. So your key B is the, is the primary key. It's like a dominant key. So that's what the formatting has done. It has changed from the default value 1 to the value 3. Now, probably you'll be thinking, you know, what is the values of key B? So, key B is shown here as 0 because non-readable. Now, I know that key B, when you use this uh, go to tax to format, the key B is still has the default factory key. That's all FFFs. Now, you can do, I'm going to show that, you know, you can authenticate using key B. If you look at the the sectors the first three sect uh, sorry the first three blocks in sector zero that's the mat sector they are set to four if you look at this entry four it's what it says here is the first three blocks can be read using either key or key b and the only way to modify that is using the key b so the right operations for all the blocks in sector zero is controlled by the key b so likewise, if you go and look at any of this uh, uh, NFC sector, 
the sector trailer is 3. We know 3 means, you know, you need key B to modify everything. And all these data sectors here, they're all set to zeros. Now, if you look at the zero, that's the default, the default value, which is, uh, which says you can, you can do both read and write using a key. Now, if you want to understand more about these access rights, I have made many videos covering every, every aspect in detail. So, I would advise you to see all my uh, Mifair Classic EV1 videos. Now, next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a small NDF message into this uh, tag and see what difference it has made in this uh, math structure. So, back into this program, I'm going to use what's called as add a new record. So, you just have to get used to this uh, software. Now, while you do this thing, you know, I've, I've taken this uh, tag away from the reader. So, I'm going to choose these are the different types of NDF messages you can write. So, say for example, the website address. Or oh, maybe it's too much. Let's go with the, a simple one called URI. So, I'm going to put my website www.funnetpy.in and say OK. So, I'm going to use this button called record NFC tag. It's asking me to place the tag. Now, as soon as you place it, the NDF message is transferred to this uh, MAD formatted. So, keep in mind, from this point on, this tag is no more a brand new tag. It's a MAD formatted tag. So, it's done. Now, we're going to see what has happened, you know, in my program. So, choose MIFA Classic, activate. And I know that you can't read the entire tag. However, now I know that sector 0 needs authentication with this authenticate and read and sector 1 needs authenticating with the nfc sector authenticate and read so now we have read both sector 1 so sector 0 and sector 1 if you look at the content of uh, the sector 1 so and if you go into this ascii mode you can see that the website finitepy.in is stored here and this is stored not as a, a raw data it is enclosed inside the ndef so so we are going to now i'm going to go through the ndef in brief in my future videos so just to just to make this a bit interesting now the first three blocks the block uh, the block four five six you know these are the the data blocks available in this sector one the first part zero three so this is this tells us a ndef message is stored the next is the this is in the tlv blocks the tag the length is 16 bytes and from here it's a value the entire this value here so this is the the url the finite pay dot in finally there's one more record here at the end now this is called as the a terminator and this says in you know, the end of the message block so so what we saw in this video is you know a brief introduction to mad then we formatted a brand new tag then we saw you know what exactly has happened to the to the various sectors so in the, in my future videos i'm going to uh, Basically, now I'm going to refer this documentation and we're going to understand every section of the document. At the same time, we're going to also play with the, with the tag. Okay, thanks for watching.